Good evening. This is Sandy Landman. I'm with the Friends of the East Brunswick Environmental Commission. And together with the library, we present the Option Green Lecture Series about six times a year. Tonight, we're really excited to have with us Mike Reisner of the Department of Recreation, Parks, and Community Services for East Brunswick. Let me just uh, start with just a little background about the Friends uh, before we get started. As you know, the Friends is a nonprofit organization, and you probably are familiar more with our programs than maybe our name. The programs include the Community Garden. We help the Township with Butterfly Park. We do the free cycling days, and we just had a very successful one recently, and we're planning our next one already. The Salamander Protection Program, which is coming up in a few months after the winter comes. The Seed Library at the East Brunswick Library, Melissa Hosick, who is on with us tonight and helping to run this, puts a lot of work and effort into. And the friends also coordinate, and we actually founded National Moth Week, which is now an international citizen science project that just celebrated yeah. its 10th anniversary, and it's worldwide, and it started right here in East Brunswick. So with that, and let me just say our website is friendsebec.com, and if you'd like to know about all of these programs and when they're happening, go on our website, friendsebec.com, and give us your email address and you will get emails as we present programs as reminders. We don't sell your emails or do any, anything like that. You will just hear about the activities of, of the Friends group. So with that, now I'd like to introduce our speaker, Mike Reisner, and give him plenty of time to speak and to take your questions. Tonight's program is exploring East Brunswick Parks. And as I said, Mike is the Director of Recreation Parks and Community Services for the Township. He's responsible for the Township's very large variety of recreation programs, as you're probably aware. The camps, the special events, Crystal Springs Family Water Park, facilities that include over 1,000 acres of parks and public lands, and also the Shade Tree Program in East Brunswick. So that's quite a, a menu of programs, Mike, that you're, that you're in charge of with charge of, and we're really delighted that you could take some time to talk about the parks tonight. And I think he's gonna talk about one of our new parks that's uh, just about to open. Uh, a little background on Mike, he participated in NCAA Division II basketball and baseball when he was in college at Springfield College, where he earned a master's in recreation and sports management. He's been a member of the NJRPA, I guess that stands for Recreation and Parks Association, for nearly 20 years, and he recently participated in the inaugural mentorship program, as well as earning the 2004 NJRPA Young Professional Award and a 2017 Certificate of Special Congressional Recognition for outstanding and invaluable service to the community. And in his spare time, if he has any, Mike enjoys participating in wood bat baseball leagues, surfing, snowboarding, and spending time with his children and family. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce Mike Reisner. Take it away, Mike. Sandy, thanks so much. And uh, thanks for all the friends of the uh, Environmental Commission, uh, East Brunswick, that they do for the community. It's a great group of people, very active, very knowledgeable folks that I turn through a lot for knowledge, so thank you. Yeah, so today's topic is exploring EB parks. Uh, a lot of times when folks think about East Brunswick, you know, their attention goes through at 18, public library, uh, well-deserved, and our school system. The township, in my opinion, is very fortunate to have a very large park system for our size community. We have over just about 22 parks, about to get a couple more as we'll go over soon. And, you know, the township current administration, previous administrations and council have the foresight to include a lot of different variety of parks and parcels of land within our community while they were developing the town many, many years ago. The town, in my opinion, has always been at the forefront of recreation and parks, keeping that in mind for people when they come to live here and, and realize it's, it's a uh, desirable place to live because of our park system. One of the reasons anyway. We'll be spending today, I'll talk mostly about parks a little bit more off the beaten path. I think most people in their neighborhood are familiar with a lot of the parks uh, that they maybe are in and around their homes. One thing we did during COVID, uh, many of the, one of the 
many of the many things we did is we created a parks guide, which hopefully everybody can see on their screen to kind of point out some of the variety that we have uh, within our community. As most people probably don't know, as Sandy pointed out, we have close to a thousand acres of, of public land in our community, 22 parks that are full of little hidden, hidden gems uh, and and that we'll go over within East Brunswick. One of those parks is, uh, and it's probably a pretty well-known park, is Bicentennial Park. And the reason why I mentioned this is because there are lots of little walking paths within Bicentennial Park, wooded and trails and, and paved paths as well that folks take, take advantage of. It also meanders along Farrington Lake, which has some really cool views. It has a little bit of everything in Bicentennial Park, from open fields to ball fields, tennis courts, probably the busiest tennis courts. In, Millicent County, if I had to guess, uh, basketball court, it's uh, 34 acres large and also houses the only handball uh, wall in town, which is also used for paddle ball, very, very popular. Heavenly Farms is pretty much known for being a youth sports mecca. It's um, a very large park, but some folks actually don't know that it does have a very long paved walking path the longest that we currently have in town, close to two and a half miles. That kind of winds through our synthetic turf fields, our beautiful natural fields, and also Diedrichson Park. Diedrichson Park are, is seven soccer fields behind Heavenly Farms, which actually most people, uh, unless your children play soccer, don't even know that's there. Those are natural turf soccer fields, a beautiful park, and uh, the path actually meanders through there. Last winter, uh, weather permitting, we did actually cut some natural walking paths through the uh, the natural areas, uh, remaining fields at Heavenly Farms. And we'll most likely do that again for people who like to walk out there. It's become a very popular place to uh, walk, jog, bike, exercise, and take pictures. We have a lot of birders that, that come out there, which we'll, we'll talk to soon, talk about soon. Frost Woods, I wanted to share a new screen here. Frost Woods is one of the largest parks we have in town is 147 acres. It's nestled between Summerhill Road and New Brunswick Avenue. It is a very unique park in that it's all passive, uh, you know, it's all uh, wooded and, and tree lined, lots of uh, animals uh, to see in there, and lots of uh, meandering trails. We did work with the scout recently to blaze a main trail, which you'll see in the blue line in front of you around the entire, which is pretty cool. And um, it's so you, know, you don't get lost because believe it or not, you actually can get lost in here. I have before many years ago because there's so many ins and outs, little trails you can discover. It's a great place to kind of get lost on a fall, winter, fall day like today. I do know there's some geocaching going on here and some biking going on and really, really a, a great place to, to take a, a fall hike. What is kind of uh, unique about this park is there's really no public parking. It's really a neighborhood park, you know, even at this large. The only place I actually can tell you to park on the weekends is Frost School, but the, during the, when school is open, obviously it's a little tricky otherwise. But the main main trailheads are listed at Summerhill and also off New Brunswick Avenue, where there's a trail kiosk with the, this particular map and also uh, a few other. Uh, items of interest for Frostwoods. Really cool park. Probably one of my, my favorites uh, personally in town. In East Brunswick too, we have three county parks, three large county parks that are in East Brunswick, which a lot of people don't know. And because we are in Nelson's County and assuming everybody at the on here as an East Brunswick resident, about 18% of your tax dollar goes to Nelson's County. So uh, I wanted to be sure that everybody was aware uh, of the opportunity that we had of these parks in Middlesex County. Tamarack Hollow Preserve is the first one that's on your screen. Accessible off of Riva Avenue and also Fresh Ponds, but the best place to park would be Riva Avenue. If you take Riva Avenue to Albrecht Lane, you'll see a, a P on the map, a little parking area. When you pull into Albrecht Lane, you will think you are in the wrong place. That's a very narrow road, but if I promise you, if you keep going to the back, you'll see the trailhead. It's a very cool park. There are, um, trail maps available on this trailhead and it's about 165 acres uh wooded forest uh, mixed with farmland as well so it's a very very cool place to take a, a family hike another one is ireland brook conservation area another county park and this particular park is best probably um access through Beekman Road, which is off of Church Lane. You'll see kind of, uh, if you can see the screen, the, the red trail where the P is, there's a good parking spot over there. <clears throat> if 
It's also uh, butts where the Friends of Environmental Commission does the salamander crossing. It's in that same general area, if those folks are familiar with the great program. But this kind of park goes parallel to Church Lane towards Farrington Lake. And that's a very, very cool hike. All family-friendly tra trails, not too far. And another great place to, uh, to check out right here in town, which I think is very. The third one is the Farrington Lake Trail. And this one, you actually have to drive. Best place to probably pick it up is to drive outside of East Brunswick into the Davidson's Mill Pond Park in South Brunswick off of Reba Avenue. You can pick that up to that trail ahead over there as well. And it kind of meanders obviously parallel to uh, Farrington Lake and actually does kind of connect, you'll see in the top right corner, to the Ireland Brook Conservation Area, which we just talked about with a little bit of navigation. But if you like kind of walking along Farrington Lake, that's a nice little stretch uh, to do that as well. Mike, we have a couple of questions. Is the park guide, the, the East Brunswick Parks Guide, available in print somewhere where it can be picked up? Yes, the, uh, the Parks Guide is available online on the Township's website. If you go to eastbrunswick.org and go to Recreation and Parks and go to Parks portion of that webpage, the Parks Guide is available online. Is it available in print, though? Is there a print version of it? It is not. No, it's not available in print. I'm happy to print it off. And if someone wants to pick it up here uh, at our office, we're happy to do that. Somebody asked if any of the trails in the parks are for um, cross-country skiing. Yes. Yeah, they are available for cross-country skiing. We did see a little bit of that last winter, I believe. Yes, we did. My winters get mixed up now. But yeah, we did have a decent snowfall and we did see some folks, especially uh, over at Frost Woods and some other uh, flatter areas. Frost probably isn't the best for that. But yes, cross-country skiing is, is uh, permitted. In, in and the Ireland Brook, do you know anything about the history of it? Is that, a, is that by the way, a county area? Yeah, that's a county park. I don't know a ton of history on those particular parks, but I do know Tamarack Hollow in particular was eventually supposed to be developed at one point in town. And I believe the township and the county pulled together to preserve it for a natural space, which was great to see. And but are, I don't, those, I, are the county areas of the, that you just talked about, like Ireland and uh, Tamarack, are they on the county website? Or do we? Yes. Know? Yeah, they, there's a lot of great information on Middlesex County website. I should have mentioned that. Great question. The county does have a great website listing all of these individual parks. The maps are downloadable on each page. They have a lot of ins and outs and what you can find there, the difficulty of the trail um, and what you might find there. So there's a lot of good information on Middlesex County's webpage as well. So definitely a good question. <clears throat> Great, thank you. The next park is Community Park. Most people don't know this park by name. It is the park where basically Crystal Springs uh, is. And it stretches from my office, which is on Dunham's Corner Road, all the way to Crystal Springs. And it is, there's a, right behind the Crystal Springs, there's a little, I should say little, it's a decent sized trail network called Downbacks Nature Trail. And again, we've been working real close with a lot of Eagle Scouts in town. We got some Great Eagle Scouts in town have done a lot of projects with us. God bless them. Wonderful, wonderful projects. And this is a, another great spot. We've recently cleaned up these trails this past winter, and they're they're wider, more delineated, easier to navigate, and really, really cool uh, place to go take a, a hike and walk. This is a very popular park for dog lovers. The pictures you'll see uh, affectionately called Dog Beach because a lot of people I like to uh, throw a tennis ball and. Uh, water there and the dogs will get them. A lot of fishermen here. Every time I go to this park, there's somebody fishing here, which is very cool. And if you have you know, interest in the you know, environment and the educational part of what you see, uh, there's a lot of signage out here. Uh, some examples that you'll see in front of you on the screen, the, uh, the entire sixth grade science class every year, every fall comes to down backs to a science trip here, which we're, we're happy to host them. It's great to see all the kids in here learning about the environment. And there's some really cool signs out there about, about the land, uh, peat moss, pitch pine, blueberry bogs, which are common on moss that uh, grows in, in masses and just bogs and deciduous forest signs. There's all kinds of uh, really cool information. These are all signs that are actually out in this particular area. And you'll also see uh, there's some pretty cool uh, beaver lodges. We have some, some, some friendly beavers in the, in the neighborhood out there. And um, You'll be able to see those actually, if you walk those trails, you actually see those up close. Uh, I don't think they're active anymore, but uh, they sure were active uh, about a year ago. So another really, really cool park. Uh, lots to see there, lots of wildlife. Very cool place to get out and explore. Another really hidden gem of the, of the community here. 
All right, so Elks Pine Woods, uh, actually shared the wrong one i apologize so uh, we have a a new uh, project going on right now Brunswick, if if you're familiar with the elks east brunswick elks property the township owns uh, a piece of property you know the bit of Farrington lake next to the east brunswick elks this was purchased i would say about uh, 10 years ago and it is uh, if you can see the screen this little red dot uh, out here out by the lake switch screens there and what our uh, plan is you can see the, the pictures uh, on the to the right is to make this a um, a singular campground for the community and we are working again with all the boy scout troops in town and wonderful groups in town to develop this into a east brunswick campground for east brunswick residents the idea behind it was to create a home base for our boy scouts in town for each of the the troops to have meetings and have overnight programs to teach them camping and and other uh, skills as well. But the secondary idea is to allow East Brunswick families who potentially have never been camping before an introduction to camping, so to speak. So if you have a small family or a large family, young kids, and you're not really sure if you should trek all the way up to upstate New York to go for a big camping trip, you can, you'll be able to give it a shot right here in town, pack up the car and, and be at the campground within about five to 10 minutes. As you can see by the picture, we've already built a fire pit and we'll be blazing a trail in this particular area. There is access to water for, for boating. So it's a really cool idea. And uh, we're going to try it out first with our, our local scouts and they're going to uh, let us know how it goes. And, and uh, we hope for the uh, spring of 2022 that we'll be able to permit it, so to speak, for. Um, East Brunswick residents who would like to uh, try uh, an introduction to camping, so to speak, real close to home. So we're pretty excited about this project and this will be happening relatively soon. Great Oak Park. Most people are aware of Great Oak Park. It's one of our busiest parks in town. Uh, it used to belong to a farm community in town, I believe. It houses our oldest Great Oak and our tallest Great Oak in town. It's a very popular area with a playground and a very popular place to walk. There is a uh, sidewalk area about a quarter of a mile loop that people take advantage of. In addition, very few people in town know that Great Oak Park has a, an arboretum. And basically there are an alphabetical listing of tree species within the park. As you follow the, the, the sidewalk around, you see the species tag uh, with little, little wooden posts. And there's a sign out in the kiosk as well, uh, kind of uh, namesaking that. So it's pretty cool. Lesser known fact about Great Oak Park. And of course, uh, Great Oak Park Environmental Commission well knows is access also to Butterfly Park, which perhaps is the most famous uh, butterfly park and the first municipal park in New Jersey to be dedicated to the butterflies. It's about 11, 11 acres. There's a uh, meandering pass through the park, a lot of cool information in the kiosk, a lot of great information throughout the park as well. And it's just a really nice walk um, through the park. And this is a, a partnership between the Friends of uh, the Environmental Commission in East Brunswick and, and the township as well to keep it going. Uh, and they do a really nice job. It's, it's a wonderful, uh, wonderful program. Biking, especially during the, in the pandemic has become very popular. The town ha <clears throat> has uh, started to, as you may have noticed, put in um, bikeways within the streets. And I wanted to point that out. This particular map that you'll see is on the township's website, on the parks department's website as well. So you can see the existing bikeways in blue, some of the proposed bikeways, some of the planned bikeways that are hoping to connect more of the community to be and a lot of the streets that have been repaved that are able to are wide enough to accommodate these bikeways have already been done Dunham's Court Road Hardenburg come to mind um, and there are more in the pipeline now when those uh, streets do become paved so that's pretty uh, exciting Heavenly Farms I had mentioned was is a really good place to bike uh, especially for, for families it's it's not too too far but it's uh, well paved and less motor vehicle traffic in and around the park. So I highly recommend uh, that particular area. Speaking of biking, I wanted to kind of point this out to folks and, and hopefully this is not the greatest picture of it. Hopefully you guys can, can pick up on this a little bit. This area of town is over by Crystal Springs Water Park, uh, Dunham's Corner Road. And you'll see in the top left corner basically is, is where actually my office is. And the red line that you see is a trail path in addition to a paved bike path that goes along Dunham's Corner Road and stops where the blue line begins, right past Crystal Springs. And I point this out because the township is developing uh, a bike path or continuing this path 
We're in the process of working with DEP and some, some federal grants and our planning and engineering department to extend this path from Crystal Springs or from my office at Douglas Corner Road all the way to Heavenly Farms. And what this will do is it will create a much longer path for running and jogging, biking from my office past Crystal Springs to Heavenly Farms, within Heavenly Farms, Deeperson Pack, Deeperson Park. And then the pathway also connects to the Community Arts Center. And you'll see the Community Arts Center on the lower end of your screen. And that eventually will also be paved uh, for biking as well. So that blue, the two blue lines, the two projects I wanted to point out, which are happening or kind of in the, in the works that happen in, in the future. And we're, we're excited about that to kind of connect the recreational areas on that side of town, which also include the baseball complex, uh, soccer. It's, it's a, it would be a really, I think, a good opportunity to, once this is done, to kind of connect the dots, so to speak, uh, in town. So. We're pretty excited about this uh, project uh, moving forward. Uh, a lot of bird watchers in town, we've noticed. There's actually a Facebook page, uh, I believe, in town uh, in regards to bird watching. There are some really good places, believe it or not, in town. And yes, one of them is the Edgeboro Landfill. Downbacks Lake, Heavenly Farms actually has some, uh, I believe, some endangered species flying around out there. The grasshopper sparrow comes to mind. The Edgeboro Landfill. <laughs> Herno Lake and Bessemer Park are all uh, great spots to go, to go bird watching. Yes, Edgeboro is mentioned here. And believe it or not, we have heard of sightings of bald eagles at the landfill, so which is very so. The uh, back to the Friends of Environmental Commission, uh, usually twice a year, they actually hold bird watching events during the course of the year to free to the public. It's, it's really well attended, very informative, and they meet at different parks and travel through and it's just a great way to learn about the birds that flock here in town and the different species and the different places that they that they call home. So very cool experience if you're into birding or even take pictures of birds. We have a lot of that going on here. Fishing, we have a lot of people uh, fishing in town. Most of them are going to Downbacks Lake, which is within Community Park, which we talked about. We actually did stock that this year uh, for the first time in a while did it ourselves because the state really wasn't doing it. I hadn't done it in recent years. So we did stock some catfish, some, some bass, some crappie, and we also put some sunfish in there. So, and also this past year we had our, our first annual fishing derby, which was a really great success with a lot of kids come out. We'll be doing that this spring again. So if you're interested in bringing the kids out in June, we'll be doing a fishing derby there again. There is also a very small boat launch to, uh, Downbacks Lake behind Crystal Springs, electric motors only for Robots, kayaks, people powered vessels, pretty much no gas motors are allowed back there. But I think every time I go back there, there's somebody out there fishing. So they must be catching something. Very cool place to, to fish back there. We probably have one of the busiest dog parks in Sussex County. It's a great park. People love to go there. It's, it's very, very busy normally all the time, all year round. And, um, it's great to see dogs and people socializing out there. And this particular park, if you're not familiar with it, is over in Heavenly Farm as well. As soon as you enter Heavenly Farm, it's on your right. It's quite large and there's an area for small dogs and big dogs and very, very popular. And our off-leash uh, dog park guidelines are available on our website as well for those who are interested in that. Also in Heavenly Farms and quite new is a disc golf course. This was a kind of a cooperative effort again with an Eagle Scout project between us, the Scout, he, we, put nine holes in the area at Heavenly Farm is across from the larger turf fields out there. You'll see the, there's a starting gate out there and a kiosk. And there's our buddy Brunswick the Bear, our unofficial mascot. Uh, but it's a really cool course, nine holes, different lengths. Uh, you have to do, you do have to bring your own Frisbees, but the, uh, the rules are posted on there. And this sign is also on our website if you want to look at it before you go. It's a very cool course. The tees are actually in the ground, so you know where, where you're supposed to tee off. Great, great game. We find it to be very popular with, with the community. A lot of people come from other towns actually to play the course. And they say it's challenging when it's windy because it's I mean, anybody who's been out to heavenly you know, it's, it's quite windy out there. Mike, we have a question about the Edgeboro landfill bird watching. Is there parking over there and where is it? You know what? I don't know. And <laughs> I'm just being honest <laughs> with you. Uh, I don't have an answer for that. I will find out if someone wants to uh, shoot us an email at recreation at eastbrunswick.org. I will find out exactly where it's appropriate for you to, to go bird watching indoor park. I, I don't want to give you any false information. So that's, that's a really good question. Mm -hmm.
Okay, thanks. The next thing I want to talk about is a new park uh, in town. We are opening this on Monday at 2 o'clock to the public, and uh, this is a real success story. We are calling it, the township is calling it Beaver Dam Park. And it's located at 11 Fresh Pond Road. Um, those of you who have lived in town for a while probably know, or even if you've just moved in, you're aware that there is a Superfund site in town, and basically it was a uh, contaminated area that was, I believe, an old paint factory where adhesives and paints were dumped into the soil years ago. I think that's what people did. If they just didn't know what to do with it. They put it in the ground, dig a hole, and that's how they really got, got rid of a lot of contaminants. And now, obviously, we know now that's not appropriate. So the EPA, Environmental Protection Agency, basically took it over many, many years ago and has been mitigating and remediating this particular property for many, many years. Mayor, Mayor Cohen and the current administration learned of this and their progress was quite positive when they first uh, started their, their tenure in administration and they were, had the idea of working with the EPA to open this particular property back up to the public. And we're actually at this point, it's a really positive success story. The EPA and the EP and, and the township should be really proud of, of this uh, particular uh, project. We've recently put a lot of time and effort into clearing it out and putting in a, a small trail system, which is, you'll see uh, to your left here. We took a lot of the, there was actually a large portion of concrete Jersey barriers that were left over at the site and we recycled it, recycled the concrete to make the, the, the pathways throughout the park. So. Another cool uh, tidbit about that project, the, the wildlife here is alive and well. I mean, there's some of the biggest deer and turtles I've ever seen in my life. Blue herons, uh, all kinds of cool snakes. I've seen all kinds of uh, wildlife thriving in this area as a lot of people really haven't been back here for many, many years. Besides, the, they still are working on uh, part of the site, but if you go on the EPA's website now and look up the free Superfund site, which is what it was called, they have updated their their website to give you the history of what's happened there and why it is safe to be released to the public now. So it's a really cool area. We put a lot of time and effort into clearing it up. And we'll have that open on Monday. You'll see uh, on the trail map to the left that there's a pedestrian bridge and a little green line that isn't completed yet. So uh, if you do head out there, family, I would suggest you wear uh, rain boots or <laughs> waterproof boots. The goal for this park is to keep it as a natural preserve and natural area. There'll be no trash cans here. We're going to uh, encourage everybody to carry in, carry out. Um, and it's just going to be a place to take a nature hike, go birding, go fishing, and just kind of get in and out of nature for, uh, for a quick bit and go for a, a nice walk. It's a beautiful park and some really cool views. We've already got a lot of cool pictures. Um, some of the folks have been able to uh, access it and you know, we're excited to, to open it on, on Monday for sure. Another project that many, many people might or may not know about is there is a, an old farm called Fodor Farm, which is off Riva Avenue, almost to the, to the property line of Milltown. So if you're going towards Milltown on Riva Avenue, that'll be on your left-hand side. I'm sorry for the, the, the red line picture there. <laughs> they do the best job. It's basically an outline township property where the town bought this rather than have it be redeveloped again. And this right now is a, it's just a, there's no access to it, public access to it, but I wanted to at least mention that this is something that the town has talked about and once Beaver Dam Park is open, also creating potentially a, a passive a walk, a walking trail uh, through this area as well. And there's some really cool views of uh, Farrington Lake over here, Farrington Lake Spillway, which is it's really, so this is another project that will be working on in, in the near future and uh, a very, very cool uh, project coming up. Just a couple of tidbits about some things that were just completed. The picture to your left is Country Lane Park. And we just reconstructed the basketball and tennis courts out there entirely. They were pretty bad shape to be quite honest with you. And so those uh, are recently redone and brand new. And the tennis courts are also aligned for pickleball. And then we have pickleball fans out there. It's a very popular sport. For those people who don't know what it is, it's basically a cross between ping pong and tennis, I guess is the best way to explain it. Got very popular in Florida and made its way up the East Coast, and now it's very popular in New Jersey right now. So we have pickleball courts in the country, and also we have six lighted courts, community park over by a Rec and Parks office down the street from Crystal Springs, and those are very busy for most of the time. And then we also just put in a bocce ball court at the municipal complex uh, right outside the senior center. We have worked with our department on aging. And, uh, developing 
the bocce ball uh, court back up and anybody's welcome to, to come. I know that's becoming popular again as well. A couple of things on the horizon too, I'd mentioned a cricket field. We recently actually just installed a, what we would call a temporary cricket field and or pitch at Bicentennial Park in the, in the open playing field at Bicentennial. It is actually available for permits, right? But the main goal for 2022 really is to build a, a dedicated cricket field potentially in the area of Heavenly Farms. We're not really sure which part of the property may or may not be developed, but that's one of the areas. People who are familiar with cricket I know that it requires a 360 degree, 60 degree playing field, so a very large open space, if you will. And that's a project that we'll be working on in the, in the very near future. <clears throat> For those of you who have an interest in cricket, it's becoming a very popular sport. It already is worldwide, but in New Jersey, it's becoming more popular. And on the right side, you'll see the uh, building, which we affectionately call the CAC, the Community Arts Center. Anybody who's been to July 4th fireworks or East Brunswick Day or some other large events that we've had, anybody who's been to a theater production of Playhouse 22, a privately run theater program in town, more than likely you've been to this. The Community Arts Center was always meant to be expanded at one point, and we are in the process of uh, doing that right now. The township was successful in uh, submitting and achieving a grant from um, the state of New Jersey for a million dollars to begin that project. And the idea basically is to um, create more space for the community where it be more meeting space or a black box theater, um, East Brunswick TV, uh, the, 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 uh, channel, the township's uh, television station might be moving into the space as well. And the idea is also to improve the outdoor amphitheater, which our department and through the pandemic, many other community organizations have used at length. We've noticed that the outdoor space there is, is very, very popular. So I would improve the, not only the, the existing building, but potentially add some more space, you know, as well down the road. So I definitely wanted to mention that as a project uh, forthcoming as well. Mike, I have a couple more um, questions and also some information that's been contributed. Sure. <clears throat> I'm just going to break in for a minute. Earlier, there was a question about where to park at the landfill. If you want to go there to do some bird watching. And one of the attendees said that the landfill is closed to the public and people can only go there during the birding days, those official days that are when the Friends EBEC, our group, get a permit to take a group there. So, and so we'll get the word out about that usually through Facebook and also our email list. Another question uh, came up, how big is Beaver Dam Park and how long are the trails? The trail system there is, it's not very long. If, if you walk the entire trail system, it's about a, probably a mile, mile and a half. Most of them are paved with concrete, crushed concrete, but there are some natural trails as well. And I believe it's the, I think it's 15 acres. I believe it's around that size. I forgot off the top of my head, I should know that. I, been there so many times recently, but it's not a huge uh, parcel of land, but it is a nice little walk to kind of get off the beaten path for a little bit. And another question, is there a fee to use the pickleball courts? And I think I'll add my own question. Do you have to reserve space there? The pickleball courts are first come, first serve in our community for the public. However, we did institute a permit system uh, a couple of years ago because we found that tennis and pickleball in general are becoming so popular, or really are so popular. So you are able to go on our website and take a permit out for a court if you'd like to do that basically at any time um, during the day and folks who do have permits have priority over the public who will just walk up and want to play and we do have a park ranger system that forces that throughout our community so i guess the short answer is first come first serve and then unless you have a permit if folks do have a permit then they need to get first priority um, to play is, it, is there a fee for the mm -hmm. permit I'm sorry. Yes, there is a, uh, a fee for East Brunswick residents. I believe it's ten dollars per hour. Thanks. Yeah, and the uh, our courts are lighted, uh, the majority of them, until November fifteenth, technically. But because of the nicer weather and COVID still being a, a thing, I guess uh, we're trying to encourage people to continue to exercise. So the lights will be on at, at least through December fifteenth to allow people to to play after work, especially now that it gets dark at five o'clock, which kind of stinks in my opinion and that's basically it for me sandy and just a note of the last kind of tidbit is uh, again on our website is is this parks guide and you'll see all of our parks and the amenities within each park listed on our website in detail uh, there's also a map of where all the parks are located uh, so there's a lot of great information on here um, 
We will be updating this in the near future with the new parks coming on board, including Beaver Dam Park. And uh, we're also starting to include in a lot of our park signs or trying to our QR codes so that when you do go to the park, there'll be a sign there. And literally take a picture of the QR code with your phone and it kind of gives you all information that's the trail system there, and rules of the park. So we're starting to incorporate that in our newer parks and trying to do that with our old parks as well. But this is a good resource to see kind of what's out there, uh, the amenities for each particular park. And I encourage everybody to, to check this out because I can't tell you how many times I've heard residents telling me, I never knew this was here. This is great. Yeah. You know, because as big or small as you think our town is, sometimes you just don't go to the other side. And uh, there's a lot of, as I said, uh, when we first started, there's a lot of great properties in this community without even leaving. You can get into nature. And I think that's what's really cool about East Brunswick and just a lot of, a lot of neat properties uh, right, right under our nose. Well, it's, it's amazing how many parks there are. I didn't even know uh, half of them, but I do walk the trails in, in, uh, Fro in Frost Woods and walk over to Butterfly Park a lot. And they are great parks. So I think we had a great attendance tonight, about 26 people. And on behalf of everyone and the friends of the East Brunswick Environmental Commission and the library, I want to thank you, Mike, for taking the time tonight, because obviously you're a really busy person, <laughs> uh, but for taking the time tonight to uh, talk about the parks, and I'm sure uh, we all learned something, and uh, I'll just check and see if there are any other questions in the... Okay, there is. Rutgers Gardens, are they in East Brunswick? Yeah, Rutgers... Rutgers Gardens technically, I believe, is New Brunswick. Very, very cool place. Highly recommend that as well. Great trail system there. Lots of cool things to see there. Wonderful people at work there. Really cool farmers market on Fridays. If, you, if, you've ever, if they think they do that from till four o'clock, I think on Fridays, if you've ever uh, driven by there during the day. But wonderful piece of property, and it might as well be in East Brunswick because it's right down Riders Lane there. So it's very accessible to folks in town and. Um, yeah, not, not technically ours or in East Brunswick, but a great, great piece of property to visit. Totally a great, great point and good question. A lot of good hiking in there too. Question about Welsh Park. What's in Welsh Park? You know, that's a little park in the, in the neighborhood nearby. Yeah, Welsh Park is a great park. It's got a great playground. It does have a small ball field, which East Brunswick Little League and softball uses time to time. It's got a kind of a mini basketball court. And it also has about, it's actually 26 acres, I believe. So there's also a walking trail system in there as well. And what's really cool about that park is that it, you can enter it through three different neighborhoods. You can't actually drive through to those neighborhoods through the park, but uh, it really services three different uh, neighborhoods and people who live in that area use it all the time. Um, constantly walking dogs, uh, jogging, or just uh, using the playgrounds. It's, it's it really was a, a genius kind of location to put the property uh, or to, you know, however the, the property was developed. It was, it's a really, really nice little park. It's usually not very busy either. It's kind of off the beaten path. So if you're looking for a little, a little getaway for about a half hour and use a playground or, or whatnot, it's a cool place to visit. Uh, I just want to read a um, comment from one of the attendees, Ronnie Lee, because it pretty much <laughs> sums up how we all feel about tonight. And she... And Ronnie says, thank you, Mike, for a phenomenal presentation of the amenities and hidden gems of East Brunswick in parks, recreation, and beneficial for the wellness and healthy lifestyles with great, exciting initiatives in the future. So that pretty much sums it. We're really grateful for your time. We hope everybody will follow, of course, the library and their programs and the Friends of the East Brunswick Environmental Commission and uh, our upcoming programs as well. And unless there are any more questions, I'd like to thank Mike again and say good night to everybody. This program has been recorded and it will be on the library's YouTube page, YouTube channel in the near future. So you'll be able to watch it again and learn, learn about the parks or uh, direct your neighbors to it. Awesome. Hope to see everybody in town. <laughs> yes. We'll see you at the parks. Yeah. Thank see you, you the park. Mike. All right. Be well, folks.